Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to use Wirecast Play, which is the $10 version of Wirecast, with uh, YouTube to stream events live. So um, I'm going to show you how to set that up. So first of all, we need to log into our YouTube account, which I've already done. So I'm already logged in uh, in my as Plus Party Productions, which is my school account we use for live streaming. So I'm going to go to my uh, go to my channel, which I'm already on. Uh, then we'll go click on the video manager. And then we'll go to live streaming and then we're going to create a new event okay so we're going to schedule an event and we'll just pretend you know like if you can do this for a football game sporting event graduation whatever uh, you just create an event so I'm going to create a test event and we'll just start it today at three o'clock it's about uh, it's, um, it's almost three o'clock here local um, we would put it in the description so you always want to put in a really good description where if people are searching for you uh, by Google they would find you so put in a really good description also tags make sure you put some good keywords in there so people can find um, your event so let's go to uh, so we'll have this we're going to do a custom event not a quick event because we're going to go with uh, the Wirecast settings so we're going to create an event and give it a second here. <clears throat> if we wanted to upload a thumbnail uh, other than the automatic one gener generated by um, or actually one that I have previously saved in uh, YouTube, um, you could do that now. Like if you had a special graphic that you wanted to put up that people would see. So we're going to select a stream here. Uh, these are some other ones that I had previously used when we do the TriCast. I have a special uh, streaming for that. And I also have, actually have another video for that uh, tutorial. You can find that on my uh, web page. Uh, but today we're going to use 1080 stream. So we're going to stream 1080. Okay. So um, we're going to use the Wirecast for YouTube. Uh, if you don't have Wirecast already installed or you need to purchase it, um, you can do the Mac or Windows. So this downloads and installs it for your system. Um, and, we, and I already have that installed down here. As you can see, Wirecast is already installed. Uh, but this is where you would do that, purchase it, uh, and you can, you know, um, and immediately get it activated. They send you a code through email, and then you can get it activated so it doesn't watermark it or anything. You can think you can use the use it with uh, with it watermarked um, in a trial mode, uh, but but I already have it uh, paid for. So um, and it's good for one license, I believe, for ten dollars. So pretty good deal. All right. So now we're gonna skip ahead to uh, screen recording I did at a recent our last football game of the year. Um, and how we uh, stream that game. So I'll get you the setup before the game, uh, during the game, and what it looks like to close out the uh, stream. So as you can see on the uh, time stamp up at the uh, top right of the corner, uh, it's uh, 5.30 basically, uh, about an hour and a half before kickoff. And so we're going to go ahead and set up the, uh, the live, uh, set up Wirecast and set up the stream and just uh, start actually streaming uh, to YouTube but not actually going live with YouTube just to make sure our data is working. So this is a screen recording from the other day. So first we have to change our audio source. And we want to change it to the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder, which is what we plugged in, and I'll explain that in a second. And you also want to turn off your built-in audio, which is the microphone built into the laptop. Uh, also, you want to change the audio source, um, which is going to be right there, change source. We want to change that to the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. And then you see the output of our ATEM uh, right there. So we're going to go ahead and open that, and we'll go ahead and open up our YouTube interface. And the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder is a little black magic box that takes SDIN out of our ATM, ATEM switcher, our 2ME switcher, and we just take SDI out to SDIN, and it uh, and Wirecast recognizes that box. So we're in our YouTube interface. We're already logged in. Uh, we're going to go to our video manager, and we're going to go to our live events, our live streaming, and then we're going to go to our live events. And this is an event we created about a week ago to make sure, um, you know, people could find us and all that stuff if they happen to stumble upon us. And right now we are not receiving any data from the uh, from Wirecast. So we're going to go ahead and click on there. We have to authenticate um, Wirecast to work with YouTube. Uh, I, I've already put in my uh, username and password uh, for YouTube. So it sees us at livepressplay at gmail.com. And then we're going to find the event, which is right there. And you hit OK. So now Wirecast is that quick configured to work with YouTube. Um, so now we uh, also hit the stream button. So and also that quick um, YouTube is picking up our uh, data. So we have a good uh, 1080 stream feeding into uh, to um, to YouTube and it looks like the health is good. So uh, everything's looking good. So let's skip ahead to about an hour before game time where we will be able to um, start the stream. 
All right, it's uh, 6.03, so we're about an hour away from game time, and we're actually going to start our live stream. So we have a beauty shout up. Um, we're going to um, preview the event. So this is from earlier where we were actually, we've been streaming data to YouTube for about half hour, and we're still looking good. So we're actually now streaming our event, which should take a few seconds here uh, to get going. Uh, but you can see the health is good, the data. We are very lucky. We have a fiber switch in our press box, and we actually run an Ethernet up to the press box from our production trailer, which you actually see in the video feed in the bottom right corner. That's our little production trailer. And in the press box, we have a uh, um, we have an Ethernet drop uh, for the... Uh, for the fiber switch so um and this is asking if you want to really really do really want to start streaming and yes we do so we are actually now live streaming um now here's a one trick is once you hit you don't want to hit that stop streaming till you're completely done once you hit stop streaming, you can't restart your stream okay and um and just because we had restart uh, just started that's why we're hearing this error it takes about 30 seconds actually for it to go live um, so this is a screen recording of that night so what we're going to do is I'm, i think i refresh the page here um, so we'll go and refresh that page and by now um, YouTube will uh, actually preview it now so uh, there is about a 30 second delay which you'll see um, once we hit this little uh, what the public view looks like so there it is and as you can see on the uh, you can tell the delay because of the countdown kickoff if you notice 5612 that's the live picture in the top left bottom right is the what's what the public sees on YouTube so 5630 so we're about right at 30 seconds delay on YouTube. So that's that's our, we found our typical delay um, built into YouTube, you know, by the time the data gets there and streams back out, so. All right, so now we're skipping ahead to the game is actually going on. We're about an hour and 15 minutes into the game. I just wanted to show you some of the analytics. Um, uh, 698 concurrent viewers, 20, 2,419 playbacks. Here's what the people are watching. And then as you can see, the as the game started and went along, uh, more and more viewers. You can tell what's, uh, you know, what quality the viewers are watching at. And that little dip in the analytics there, uh, we actually didn't lose uh, contact. I think it's just some uh, anomaly in the live analytics. Um, I've never seen that before, but uh, we actually didn't go off the air or anything. So uh, as you can see, we um, topped out at over 600 and something viewers uh, live as so far an hour into the game. Uh, this was actually one of our ended up being one of our most watched uh, live broadcasts. Um, so we had a, a pretty decent game, except uh, unfortunately our team didn't win. This was the uh, the game right before the um, going to the uh, Superdome for the uh, state championship game. So and that little anomaly that I'm pointing out there with the mouse, um, not sure what that is. Uh, we've topped out at 699 viewers. That was our most, uh, or actually 701 it looks like. So, And we right now have 681 at the time of this screen recording. And one thing I wanted to mention, if you see it looks like on the Wirecast, the picture's stuttering. It, um, that's from, the, I believe, the screen recording in QuickTime. Uh, when it was live, it actually did not look like that. It used full motion video, uh, no stuttering. I think that's just an uh, artifact of the, um, again, of the QuickTime uh, recording. So I just want to kind of mention that um, it, it doesn't look like that when you're actually uh, doing the live stream. So uh, everything's looking good. Uh, good stream. Health is good. Uh, no... Uh, no errors. If you if there were any drops in the stream, you would see a list of errors under where it says good right there. And there would be a list and the time and all that stuff of when the errors occurred. Um, and when we first started using YouTube, we would get those periodically, just trying to sort out our district internet, the filtering system, all that kind of stuff. So um, our internet, our IT team at the, um, at the district level uh, has really helped us out a lot with that. And so we, we haven't had any problems this year. So all right, so now we're at the end of the game. As you can see, the score didn't work out quite uh, so good for us. So now we're going to go ahead and stop the stream. So again, once you stop the stream, uh, you're done. You cannot restart the stream. So don't do this to like pause the stream or anything. Um, you definitely don't want to do that. So we're actually stopping our event. Uh, as you want to, are you sure you want to stop because you will not be able to restart? I said yes. So the event has now officially ended. We are still sending data through Wirestream, so we have to stop that. So we stop this stream here. So we uh, stop the stream there, and pretty soon we'll probably um, see the data drop off there. And we're going to go ahead and quit out of Wirecast here. Uh, do we want to save it? It's so easy to set up. I just I don't save them. I just uh, go ahead and quit out of them. 
So here we are about 15 days past the uh, actual broadcast on December 2nd. We're on December 16th. Um, so I wanted to kind of show you what, what it looks like on Safari so all the stuff you uh, can see about your broadcast uh, if you go back to it uh, at a later date. Um, so let's go to our YouTube channel. Uh, this is our live press play where we stream, and it's just a regular old YouTube channel. Uh, but I primarily use this for streaming and uh, uploading some some of the special videos we do. Um, so let's uh, we're on our on the my channel page. I'm just going to scroll down. We have a couple of tutorials we just did. Actually, I have the multi screen uh, multi viewer recording of that game on the second quarter and the uh, second half uh, with the uh, announcer. Um, uh, not the announcer, because we did actually did not have announcers that game. We had to shuffle some crew around. Uh, but I do have the intercom uh, on those uh, multi-viewers. So that was one of the little disappointing things. Uh, we had a couple of crew changes that we had to make last minute, so we uh, ended up not having announcers. So we just went with the uh, stadium announcer and that sound uh, so I could staff the crew. Uh, so we got to make some tough decisions sometimes. So anyway, here's our broadcast. Um, you can see it's... Uh, so we'll... We'll go ahead and pause that so you can you can hear that we actually plugged into the stadium announcer, uh, plugged a uh, plugged a XLR cord into the stadium announcing uh, uh, mixer so we would get a, a good quality uh, of that. Um, so anyway, uh, here's our game broadcast archive. So this is one of the neat things about YouTube. Uh, it does archive your broadcast. So here's when we started streaming, which when we hit that, if you remember right, we when we hit that uh, stream button, uh, kickoff time. So when we actually hit the stream button on that tutorial you saw this is when it actually starts streaming so it archives from the point you start streaming to the point you stop streaming and I'll go to the very end of it here uh, and you'll probably see it uh, yeah, there's our final and there's not much left um, so there's the final end of the game and you know most of you viewers will kind of can skip along and, and you actually get to the broadcast so um, the game broadcast starts somewhere in here so oh, here's the end of the first so Anyway, uh, there's the game broadcast, uh, and let's go to our analytics page where we see some interesting stuff. Um, when we actually stopped streaming, we had 300 people, 311 people watching, so this is the number of players connected to the stream at the most recently available time, which is when you shut it off. Um, we had 4,794 uh, playbacks, um, and then we peaked at during the live event at 708 viewers, which is pretty good for us. Uh, not too bad for a high school broadcast, student broadcast. And our broadcasters are all students uh, or a couple of ex-students. But uh, most it, they're all you know still either my students or a couple of my uh, students who are now in college. But, um, but uh, all students. Um, so kind of neat that they are able to do this. And here's the quality that most people watch back. So here's the total. And this is the uh, the red stream, which is 360p up to purple and 1080. So here's the purple stream. So um, that's when most people are either, you know, streaming it on a really good connection. Uh, we hear a lot of our, f uh, you know, people that watch our broadcast, they'll pull it up on their computer or stream it uh, through um, like Apple TV onto a live uh, onto their big screen TV or something like that. So there's a lot more you can dive into, but uh, just wanted to kind of show you the back end uh, uh, after the broadcast. It archives it, which is very cool. So um, really uh, good stuff, and it's all absolutely free. Uh, there are some, few, you know, the YouTube rules where, you know, uh, you have to watch the copyright music, which is a, you know, uh, which is like music they would play over the stadium sound system. You got to be very careful with that, uh, about that stuff because it will stop your stream if um, if it's a banned uh, song uh, that, you know, blocked everywhere. They will cut off your live stream. And yes, it has happened to us uh, from a song they played over the sound system of the uh, of the uh, stadium. So. Um, that's not much fun at all, and then scrambling around to restart your broadcast. So, so that's a, a live football game there with um, using Wirecast and using um, YouTube to stream. It's a super easy setup. Um, uh, we've had really good luck. We've been using that all year this year. It's the first year we've completely used uh, YouTube and Wirecast to stream. Um, and uh, I have to say it's been a great experience. Uh, we are very lucky to have a production trailer where we can do a live switched feed and just feed it right into a, uh, we're actually feeding um, an iMac, um, a pretty new one uh, that we bought last summer. Um, and it's pretty loaded down, so it uh, has no problem streaming. Um, and uh, we do we before the, uh, we started actually this season streaming through a uh, laptop, uh, a MacBook Pro, uh, and we found that the percentage of 
uh, CPU usage was up in over 70%. Uh, so that's, uh, according to what I've read on the internet, uh, YouTube and uh, Wirecast, that's not good to be using 70, over 70% 70 of the CPU power of your um, of your uh, of your processor for your computer. So we ended up starting taking an iMac with us and putting it in the trailer. And uh, so for, and after we did that, we have no problems at all sort of streaming. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, be sure to hit me, uh, send me an email at pressthe-play at gmail.com. That's pressthe-play at gmail.com. That's our kind of school account for our um uh, for our little, uh, I would put in air quotes, production company, uh, what we use to um, stream out. We also have a website at pressthe-play.tv. That's the website we actually send everybody to to view the YouTube live stream. So we embed that uh, into the uh, into our uh, website. So super easy setup. Um, if you do have any questions, again, you can email me. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.